And when I went to school, there were Irish, Jewish, Italian, Polish, African American, Portuguese. We all went to school together. The idea that there are people that thought that differences were like defects. And at that time, I was a pioneer because people well, of color. Well, things were quite different were... by the time you arrived on the scene. <laughs> quite different to yeah. each other. But when you don't feel like you have worth, it's easy to kill someone who looks like you. And, and my yeah. late husband said, they don't want us because we're black. It took me, I guess, three or four months to realize that the woman at Travelers was just lying so, uh, when she saw These people me. were just trying to vote. I remember all of that. That was not a Spike Lee movie, and I try to tell kids that You may be a time. teacher, but you are forever a learner. And so there is such a fear that we have in society of one another because we don't make an effort to get to know one 2016, another. 2016, um, obviously racism has changed. People kept just laughing at me because that I was different. That goes back into our history of understanding self. She was at a concert and she said that dig deep down in what was really going on and well, actually how now that you say that I kind of want to be better than them. kids don't really know what's Yeah happening. label a different way like you don't want to be labeled with us you don't want to be with us. You could have done a little differently in the districts. Education the and books that seemed to be all that was talked and about. And more minorities started to come in and the church didn't really agree with that so they shut down for those reasons. Some people in my class they can be a little racist sometimes, but they might not know it. Mm -hmm. I remember the civil rights movement in the South and wondering how can you do that to people just because of the color of their skin? Who made the rule? That has always been my question. Who made the rule? Why is there this sense of superiority over another race? We're all human. We're all God's children. talked about race as such. I know uh, my family, they used to get the newspaper, the Bridgeport a newspaper and the Amsterdam News. They were African American newspapers, but it was just another newspaper and it didn't seem racial to me. There was a lot going on, but the interesting thing that happened is that my parents kind of protected the children, and they made sure that we weren't exposed to everything that was happening, and they created an environment that was kind of safe for us, because it was a pretty racist time. Uh, I have had a very interesting life one that you would not even imagine. I was born in 1923 
Wow. wow. <laughs> what were your best childhood memories? I think my best childhood memories were um, being able actually to go outside and play every day and having the whole neighborhood be the village. You know, you didn't have to worry about where your kids were or if you couldn't see them. And um, you always knew somebody else was watching your, your child. And, and I remember just always being encouraged to go outside and play. And, and that's what I did. We did a lot of learning stuff and because there was so much freedom. Uh, I mean, we played games like hopscotch and that kind of thing, but not as much as as being out in the woods and, and the water and figuring things out and making shows and making, you know, forts and things in the trees. We just had a tennis ball, not a real uh, baseball, a tennis ball, and two bats, and it was great. After dinner and after your homework and all of that, about five or six of us got together to play baseball, and it was so much fun. But see, now, I mean, it was all unorganized. You know, we didn't have the little league and the this and the that. Yeah. We just got together in the neighborhood. My parents were very strict. Okay. And uh, every night at 5 o'clock, I don't care where you were, you had to be at home sitting at the dinner table. When my father took his place, every child was in their place. There were no excuses because my father then wanted to know, what did you do today? Wanted to know about each person. Hartford, Connecticut's largest city, is often called the insurance capital of the world. For here are to be found a hundred different industries. And then as you grow up and you see how things happen and um, places where you go, um, I'll never forget, we were going down to the Naval Academy in Maryland. My girlfriend's cousin was graduating. So on the way, we stopped um, to, to get something to eat and to use the restroom. Well, we went inside and we were able to get something to eat but we weren't able to use the restroom. We had to go outside to the outhouse. And that was the first time I'd seen that. You know, I remember all the assassinations. I remember all the civil rights movements. I remember all the um, uh, differences on, of, of, of how people treat us. And you know, the, when uh, black people were being hosed down with water hoses and, and uh, just trying to, to have the same rights as everybody else when when the, the march on uh, Selma. These people are just trying to vote. I remember all of that. That was not a Spike Lee movie, and I try to tell kids that all the time. This is not a movie. This is real. And when you don't appreciate what people sacrificed to make your life better, that bothers me. So I try to, to, to help them understand that this is going to go on again when they say, you know, history will repeat itself. It will if we don't stand up and have a voice and say, no more, no more. I was also came of age during the Civil Rights Movement, and I think that was a time when I really became very active and involved in the Civil Rights Movement and the Women's Movement. So I came of age in a time when I, there was a lot going on, a lot of activism, and so I was able my negative early experiences, I was able to find a healthy outlet, uh, you know, and not internalize that I was less than. And I was employed by B. Altman and Company of New York City, Fifth Avenue and 34th Street, which was one of the best known department stores in the country. And I was, uh, I went through the stages of learning and finally was assigned to the executive training program. And from that program, I was made a buyer. And at that time, I was a pioneer because people of color were not buyers in big department stores. I was the first black music teacher in uh, music teacher in Hartford. The children read 
music notes you're smiling now because there's no such thing as reading music notes anymore i worked in the town of farmington with a program called project concern and every day we caught a yellow school bus i felt that the students in farmington got much as much or more out of meeting with people who were different from them that's actually a relief for me to hear experience in a culture that was different than than they were you know that's there's fear when we don't know one another yes so when we get to know one another we find we have so much in common and i think that's a good thing being a young black woman what are some of the challenges that you face? Um, well, it's like me like going into an interview and like really giving my all to the the person that's interviewing me and like them them turning me down because of the color I am and I'm a girl. So, yeah. yeah that's that's very that's one of the, the real challenges of living your life in a black body. Right is that you always have to raise that question. Was this person really better than me? Or, you know, mm-hmm. is, is this the big, yeah. the big D, the, the big discrimination? I am so glad I grew up in the South because in the South, you knew where you were, the devil you knew. When you come to the North and you think that everything is different, it's just that you can't put your hands on it. I feel like now the problem is a lot of the black children don't know their history and aren't mm. connected to their history, so they don't care. Right. And I think that plays a big part because they're like, oh, you know, I'm black, that like, there's no big deal, what's right. racism? But like, right. they don't understand how important it right. is and like, what it means. Now you're seeing all those changes from the years that, you know, you're, you're obviously living. And to see how the youth takes it now and sort of takes it for granted at times because they have no idea what's what's going on and what's happening and some of them really don't care and this is exactly why i want my voice to be heard and to remind people and i don't care if they're sick of hearing it you can't forget what has happened in this country to make us feel that we don't belong here i try to um talk to kids sometimes and like see if they know their like history and stuff so I asked them if they know who like Frederick Douglass is or who they know if they know who Harriet Tubman is and I and they'd be like no who's that and I was like oh, come on you gotta know who these people are like they're the they're part of the reason why you know you get to do whatever you want today I hate it in school they only teach you about slavery days and you're just like all oh. we hear is just slavery is slavery and it's like okay well what did the black people do right like what what were we trying to do that was actually good besides yes um besides working for the whites and just being put down all the time like what were some of the upcomings that in our lives that bring us here today mhm our children don't have a sense of their ancestors our history doesn't start at the boat of slavery. Our history goes way back. We were the storytellers. We were the philosophers. We were the teachers. We were the mathematicians. We were the educators. We were the spiritual leaders. They don't know that. They need to be taught that their ancestors were not killing each other. They were lovers. So I had the experience of really being reared by this grandfather who was an ex-slave. I mean, he used to tell me, he used to tell me bird rabbit stories. Now, why I thought he was reading those stories, I don't know, but he probably couldn't read. But those were really Anansi stories from Africa, which I didn't realize, of course, until I was a much older adult, because we really, we really didn't talk about Africa, and certainly, mm-hmm. 
nobody wanted to be affiliated with Tarzan and the monkeys and the savages. <laughs> so we didn't learn about our, our history, our background, and what all that meant. But reflecting on it, how rich it was that I learned so much from my grandfather, who knew those things from that experience. In my day, mm -hmm. we would do a lot of clapping, snapping, which I cannot do anymore because arthritis has my fingers. <laughs> would you clap the way I am saying it? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Okay. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Monday is the birthday of Martin Luther King. Very good. This is what this is the type of its many small communities. Each with its village green and spired church, there lingers the spirit and America. Her sons have played a conspicuous part in America's story. At Litchfield is the Beecher homestead, where were born the Reverend Henry Ward Beecher, famous minister. Everybody was poor. I mean, there were some families that had more, and some kids had cashmere sweaters, but it wasn't a problem. There wasn't like I wish I had were rich like the Granadas. It wasn't anything like that. Everybody was okay. It's not that way now. And and poverty um, is is almost a it's almost a a, a linchpin of the society, so that a whole lot of people have very little, and a very few people have very lot. And the quality of people's lives, and it's not about being wealthy or rich. It's about being able to do basic things, you know, pay the bills, get your kid a new pair of shoes, you know, go have dinner every once in a while. There are lots of people that can't do that. So we've gotten wiser, but not better, I don't think. Well, the uh, one of the things that I want both of you to do and remember. Please concentrate on your family and the background of your family. Definitely. And go back as far as you can because that will give you a story of your life and life that will come after you. Definitely. And I, I hope that, you, you, that young people will see beyond color, uh, you know. And I think to some degree you are, but I think uh, we live in segregated communities now more than we ever did in the past. So we have to like look for opportunities where we can come together and share our common humanity. People kept just laughing at me because I was different and I just like said, well, you're different too. Like exactly. we're all different and that's what makes us unique. So you need to embrace it and not forget about it.